Good afternoon everyone and welcome to the second lecture of our online lecture series. This is Juma Ghosh, Curator at Nehru Science Center, Mumbai. We are holding this week-long lecture series where we will help the students to explore various career opportunities in future if they choose to work in the frontiers of science. Today's speaker, Dr. Sejal Shah, uh, will be talking about the future opportunities for the Indian girl students in ITER India project. Let me take this opportunity to introduce her. Dr. Sejal Shah did her master's and PhD in physics from the MS University of Baroda and joined in for plasma research as a scientist in 2008. She was then deputed to work for the ITER India project. ITER India is one of the seven mega science projects in which India is participating along with other six uh, domestic agencies for the realization of fusion power as a source of energy for future power plants. Presently, she is working on the effect of radiation on ITER grade insulating material. With these words, I would like to thank Dr. Shah for accepting our invitation and uh, I am handing it over to her. Thank you very much, Ms. Juma. It's really nice of you. Um, uh, I guess I'm audible, right? Okay. So, very good evening, everybody. And uh, as she has already introduced, I'm Sejal. And uh, on behalf of ITER India, I would like to thank Nehru Science Center for uh, this wonderful opportunity to interact with uh, students. And uh, it is really nice of holding uh, this kind of seminar to encourage the students, uh, particularly for the field of science and technology. Uh, I just share my uh, slides. I have prepared the slide keeping in view that uh, all of you belongs to uh, student category and those who are already experienced and uh, have uh, much, uh, I mean, if you are knowing much about uh, this project of ITER India, if you have visited mega science events, then please excuse me. This is very basic things which I'm going to discuss about. Um, and uh, so let us start. The two things I, I am keeping it in uh, concentration here for the presentation, it's about ITER. Uh, I, I can say a step towards clean and safe energy. Why I'm saying so, we'll look into the upcoming slides and then future opportunity for the girls students in ITER. So that is forming the outline of the presentation. So I will briefly uh, introduce about ITER, why it is required, what are the key features of the project and uh, how India is contributing to ITER. And the most important one that what is the status of a woman in such kind of project in India and abroad and uh, for the scope. Uh, so with that, let us start. This is very, very basic thing. Uh, and I'm sure you all aware about it that these are all home appliances which makes our life much simpler and smoother. And to operate them, we need electricity. Electricity comes in form of energy. So uh, we need to understand that where, what is the source of energy? Uh, in one of the mega science event, uh, when uh, ITER India was also having uh, exhibition and uh, one very small kid of grade one or two possibly visited the stall and when he was asked that, do you know what is the source of energy? And very innocently he said that um, we get energy from bone vita. <laughs> So, well, that's, uh, I mean, he's not absolutely incorrect, but here we are talking about the energy in terms of running appliances, uh, energy in terms of uh, requirement of industry, in terms of uh, communication, uh, transports, everything. So that is different source of uh, energy. And uh, here we can talk about two types of energy sources. So students who are uh, grade five and above, I'm sure you must be aware about this uh, name about renewable energy source and non-renewable energy source. So renewable means uh, we get plenty uh, uh, in uh, amount from the nature like solar energy, wind energy, hydraulic energy, or even nuclear. Now here I'm uh, talking about nuclear fission. 
energy. So this energy comes with some limitation. They are limited not in amount, but they have limitation of efficiency. Because if we see the solar flux, which is coming on Earth is very less. And out of it, how much we can extract is further quite less amount of which we can utilize. Secondly, the installation of such kind of source need uh, enormous amount of space. Uh, and then also, it also depends on the nature. So sometimes if it is cloudy, if it is not, there is no wind, then we have to rely on the other energy sources. Uh, when we talk about nuclear, then there is a possibility of radiation hazard and there are some um, accidents in the past like Chernobyl and Fukushima, which, ha which uh, happened during the tsunami. So keeping that in mind, we have to look for alternative energy source, which is safe. Now, if we talk about non-renewable energy sources, they are basically mainly coal, oil, and natural gas, which we can extract from Earth's crust. But the limitation with them is they are limited. Secondly, they are taking billions of years to form uh, inside the Earth. Then once we burn, either of them, it will produce greenhouse gases and pollute environment. Though, despite of this limitation, we have to rely on these kind of sources because we do not have any alternative so far. So if you look at the central image, uh, I am sure you will be able to see my cursor. So right now we are depending on oil, gas and coal for our major energy consumption. And if you see the amount of renewable energy sources which we are utilizing are relatively very, very less. That is uh, the limitation I have already explained because the technology also yet not been established to uh, uh, which we can extract maximum amount of energy from that kind of sources. So what is the alternative for that? For that, we are looking for fusion reactor. Now, what is fusion? Fusion means when two very small atoms collide with each other and make a bigger atom or some other uh, byproduct. And uh, during this process, enormous amount of energy gets released. If we extract this energy, to run the turbine, and if we can convert it into electricity, then it, our life becomes very easy. This is exactly the process which is happening in the sun and the stars. So as you are all aware that in sun, since millions of years, hydrogen is burning and it is providing lots and lots of energy. So if we can uh, do similar kind of experiment on the earth and do some kind of fusion which is taking place in sun, then we can also uh, extract similar amount of energy uh, on the earth. So if we look at the positive side of this kind of reactor is that the fuel is easily available. It provides very clean energy because the byproduct is very less. Secondly, there is no possibility of chain rea reaction in such kind of uh, fusion process. So you cannot expect uh, the uh, accident which has happened in case of fission reactor and the radiative uh, material radiation which is coming out of this material can also vary less as compared to uh, that kind of source. So here I have shown an uh, image. It is an eater cross section I've taken from eater site and it is just a ray of hope to get or to step towards the safe and clean energy uh, sources. So uh, for ITER, uh, there are seven different domestic agencies, including India, participating and contributing to make this machine working. Right now, it is in conceptual and uh, during, in development stage, the machine uh, is being developed, uh, the site is ready, the construction is taking place, and once the entire machine is uh, uh, is assembled, then experiment will start. We'll see 
how it is progressing in the upcoming video. So uh, because if I say it won't be that effective, if, uh, rather than if you can see the video, it will, it, you can capture the essence of the project. So right now the project is being built at Kadrash, which is the southern part of the France. And India became the seventh partner in 2005. The objective of it is fusion gain Q greater than or equal to 10. What does this gives mean? That whatever input energy you provide, you should get 10 times higher output than the input one. So ITER's mission is to demonstrate the feasibility of fusion power and prove that it can work without significant negative impact. So if we look at the key features of ITER, this is how it looks like. Uh, I'm sure if you are looking for the first time, it will be a uh, little difficult for you to understand the components and how it is assigned, but uh, with the video, it will be a little bit simpler and those who are already aware with the mega science event and uh, some of the talks, uh, it would be easy for you to understand and realize how complex it is. So if we talk about it, a vacuum vessel, which is uh, inside uh, component and it is facing the plasma. And if you see the vacuum, uh, its weight, it is about 8,000 tons. So it is even heavier than the Eiffel Tower. Then if we talk about the magnetic field, because they are superconducting magnetic fields, so for superconductor to function, uh, the functioning requirement of superconductor is extremely low temperature. So we have to keep it very low. And for that, it is kept at liquid helium temperature of minus 269 degrees centigrade, which is even colder than the Pluto. And if you see the operating temperature at the core of the vessel, so it is 150 million degrees centigrade, which is 10 times higher than the sun. Why? Because at sun, the fusion can take place because of its own gravitational force and extremely high temperature. But at earth, uh, we have to replicate similar kind of environment, but because we do not have as strong gravitational force as sun have. So we have to keep that temperature extremely high of about 150 million degrees centigrade. So systems are designed in such a way that it can hit the plasma to that uh, extent and it can cool the magnet to the extent which is mentioned here. So if you can, uh, if you can imagine this diameter of this machine is about 30 meter and in this 30 meter, the coldest part on the earth and hottest part of the of, of the earth is at the same place okay then if we see some other features like the machine will be operated remotely operated and maintained because uh, it's not feasible to operate it or handle it with uh, man's hand so uh, remote operation uh, its planning, its design is done accordingly. Then cryostat. Cryostat is the outer jacket, which you can see this white one. It is provided by India and it is the world's largest vacuum vessel with a volume of about 16,000 meter cube. The, the density of air during operation is 1 million less, uh, less denser than the air. Now, as I said, these are superconducting magnets, which are uh, kept for the extremely high magnetic field, which is the requirement of the experiment. And if we see the strand of superconducting magnet, it is about one lakh kilometer. So if you start from uh, on the equatorial of the earth and make two rounds, that is the length of the superconducting strand, which are used in ITER machine. So just uh, this is all I have said, but because uh, to make you understand, let us look at the video. And those who are looking for uh, the first time, I understand that some of the terminology, technical terms will be difficult for you to understand, but don't worry, it is just to make you understand that how complex and how fascinating this project is.
sorry did i hear something okay okay is it visible now okay this was the condition in 2010 around Are you able to listen the audio of this video? No. Sorry. Sound is not there. Okay, I was under impression that audio is also there. But anyway, I can discuss you. I mean, I will just describe. So these are different parts which are being assembled and this is just animation different part how they are being assembled if you see the outer one it is cryostat and uh, this is uh, the time when uh, the project was finalized by seven domestic agencies after that the site uh, was being prepared uh, for this experimental uh, assembly or experimental setup so this is according to design and contract award of different uh, components and this is how they are fabricated and this is the site uh, how it looks like at the moment you see these are different components and you can see the massiveness of the component this is the cryostat which is provided by india it is covered in a, a close environment just to make it safe so you can't see that but uh, in the video in later part of the video you can see those component as well this is how the components are shipped to iter site from seven different domestic agencies this is the one which uh, is the lower cryostat which is placed inside the building you can see the depth of the building and these are different parts coming from uh, different uh, domestic agencies they are shipped to the iter site you can see this uh, black zone this is a heat exchanging uh, unit they are also provided by india these are tf coil which is provided by russia i guess i'm not sure about
so this is the animation that how assembly will be done and uh, how the experiment will be performed so these are different components there are millions of components which are uh, being assembled and as i said before everything will be done remotely so you can see the uh, remote operation of different component how they are being assembled this is animation as i said but you can also see some of the real pictures of the site in this video so these are magnetic coils which are being installed and the most amazing thing is the tolerances uh, despite of such a giant structure very tight tight tolerances of about 2 to 3 mm are met uh, in the assembly of uh, these components and you can imagine the uh, the size of the machine by looking at the man standing here of course it's uh, imaginary it's not a real man but uh, for scaling uh, you can understand how giant it is and this is the real site this is the part of the vacuum vessel and uh, it is showing by animation that how it will be assembled in the machine this is central solenoid which is kept at the center and this is cryostat top lid which is closed uh for the commencement of the experiment this is uh, this is showing that how the machine are designed which can lift a very heavy component of few thousand ton and uh, even can rotate from horizontal to vertical i wish you could hear this video but of course this uh, video is available online so you will get the feel of it if you can if you want to see that way this is the original site of eater and this is actual images how the assembly is being taking place it says that once the assembly is being done uh, the experiment will start somewhere in uh, 2025 towards the end and that will be the experiment to establish the functioning of the component so it is the first plasma which is planned to get generated in towards the december 2025 and this is the process which is shown that deuterium and tritium how they fuse uh inside the vessel so at very high temperature and extremely high magnetic field uh, the plasma of deuterium and tritium is there inside the vessel and uh, uh, it gets fused and it releases a very large amount of energy uh, with neutron and helium which is the byproduct of the fusion and this is again different parts of the vessel it is called diverter so this is the actual site from the outside and there if you see the central one is for the tokamak and there are other auxiliaries requirement which is uh, shown side by so i just stop sharing here and we'll come back to our slides again
okay so as i explained these are some of the key features of eater and unable to change the slide okay and what india is contributing to eater so as i said the outer jacket it's crushed right but there are several other uh, components which are being uh, fabricated designed and fabricated by these nine uh, packages of india and then uh, once they are uh, established uh, see for for making those components there are need of some prototyping testing and once it is established that okay they are functioning well they will be delivered to eater site at trans so all these activity most of them are being done in india and these are some pictures uh, from this nine package uh, it is difficult i understand to read out uh, each and every text and uh, to uh, realize that how complex this component is but uh, just to make the thing short this nine packages are essential things uh, for the functioning of peter and it is they are being provided by india so if you want to know uh, further detail about this package they are also available on our uh, website which you can visit now these things uh, to to do all this work i will just introduce our eater india staff so this photograph was taken long back because after that i do not have any photograph of all the employees together but this was taken maybe around 2010 or 11 but you can see a very less amount of ladies in this picture the status is of present female staff is about 13% uh you can see most of them are here and some of them are uh, in between so isn't it surprising that despite of such a big project and lots of work uh, female staff is very less but this is not surprising actually because if we see the status of researchers in india it is also the same this is the report from toi i have taken and it says that only 14% of indian researchers are women now if you see uh, that graduation part most of the girls uh, yeah, if you see the girls are graduating more than the boys then why that ratio becomes so less when it comes to the level of research or any any scientific or technical um, posts why it is so so for that we have to find out the reason and uh, if all of you are willing then we can have a small session where i need your video on if it is okay with you if not then we can uh, do it other way around uh, maybe ms zuma can uh, uh, advise how should we proceed hello no we are going ahead uh, we can i can take the question right now or at the end of the talk but i just wanted if the participant be online uh make their video on it would be wonderful otherwise we can go ahead with the uh, uh, with the next slide okay fine okay so the reason which we were talking about is the why uh, this is a possible uh, reason for gender gap in stem field stem uh, means science technology engineering and mathematics so why there are less number of girls uh, than the boys so i have just uh, putting few reasons but there are n number of reason i'm sure but uh, making the thing short 
See, if we look at the first picture, limited opportunity based on financial condition. Now, suppose if a family consists of two kids, boy and a girl, and they can afford only uh, uh, education of one children, they will choose boy over the girl. Why? Because they think that, okay, boy will uh, grow up and uh, bring money to the family. So that is the typical understanding of our Indian family, which need to be changed. But anyway, for the moment, what we can do is if the girl wants to go for further education and if uh, she's brilliant and she wants to acquire higher study, then uh, we can introduce them some kind of uh, government initiative, which they are doing for the higher study, for taking up, uh, taking up research as a career. And then uh, uh, they can, uh, I mean, we can promote their education. Second picture is practical difficulty. I do not know where the picture has come from, but it is a uh, source is WhatsApp. But uh, the, uh, the uh, essence of showing this picture is that, that if you see the path of woman is uh, extremely complicated. If we consider this the race of a career or race of a research, uh, it is not simple. This picture is not 100% sure because if we see the boys, their, their path is also not as simple as it is shown. But uh, compared to that, female has little more responsibility towards the home and uh, towards the society, which make it little complicated to go there uh, them for a higher studies. So, but what is the solution? I, I believe that the girls should understand that you are born with a capability that you can handle both the things and still win the race. Okay, and the third is the most dangerous one is this stereotype thinking. Now, what is mean by that? Okay, I was discussing in the last slide uh, to have a small session, but nevertheless, let us think here. When I say some name like a doctor, like a mathematician, like a scientist, like an engineer, who will come in front of your mind without any rational thinking you will think that uh, that person will be a boy so that thinking uh, stereotype thinking is not that only boys are thinking like that way or girls are thinking like that way we have brought up in this environment and uh, it is our subconscious thinking that uh, certain uh, job or certain profession belong to certain kind of gender which is not correct so that thinking we need to change. And based on that, girl need to uh, go in research field more and more and start applying for similar kind of projects. And there are enormous amount of opportunity which are there, which we are going to discuss in the next slide. So these are some of the government initiative which I could come across in very limited time. But uh, you can go through the site and there are a number of uh, uh, such initiative which aid a girl to go to take up her as a uh, higher uh, her career and uh, to take up uh, her studies in the field of science and technology and these are some of the initiative uh, oh, mainly for women and which are over and above with some general category schemes which where you can contest with a, a male counterpart as well. So the purpose of showing this is that, that those who really wants to take up uh, science or technology as a career, the financial conditions should not be a stopping stone for that. Now, if we look at the opportunities at ITER. This is I'm talking about uh, ITER at France. And this is the staff picture, uh, which was taken in 2017. So uh, this was uh, uh, actually this is some report. And uh, with that, uh, if we see extract the number, the female staff is still promising about 22%, which is still better than what uh, we have in India. Now, the trend, if we see statistics, so it started with 9% in 2015 and it reached to 22 in 2017, which is very promising. So it says that increasing trend, uh, increasing trend depicts a potential opportunity for girl student uh, to opt science as a career. 
they can uh, they can opt for uh, different kind of streams uh, based on their choice and then take uh, go for higher study do some re research and then can apply in some project and contribute so these are some of the multidisciplinary requirements at eater uh, these are uh, this is not all these are just a few which I am listing uh, over and above the simulation and many other analytical assessment which are required uh, for it a kind of project. But these are some uh, branches which I have listed here where uh, if you are interested, then you can opt for this study like nuclear physics. Uh, I'm just uh, elaborating for the student if they belongs to a lower uh, grade. So nuclear physics, nuclear means the nucleus, which is at the center of the atom and the study related to that uh, atom and its property of the nucleus, which consists of neutron and proton. So that study is come, uh, comes under nu nuclear physics and plasma physics. Plasma physics is all about ionized gas and their property. Fusion, I have already explained. Material science means material which we can see from naked eye. And if we uh, look at it from the microscope, it, it will be uh, completely different. So the study about its structure, its performance, its characterization is all comes into material science. High energy ion and neutral beam. For ITER perspective, I have captured this image. This is used for heating plasma. But apart from that, there are several application. And in India also, we have several accelerator of similar kind to generate this kind of beam and uh, uh, for different applications. So that also you can opt for. Then radiation study. Radiation, uh, when the fusion takes place or any kind of uh, nuclear uh, reaction take place, the radiation comes out as a byproduct. How to deal with those radiation, how to extract them, how to utilize them, how to control them, how to uh, how the radiation affect human being, how the radiation affect the material. All this study comes under this radiation study. Then uh, if we talk about robotics and remote handling, as I said that ITER is a, such a huge project, we cannot handle uh, each and every nut and bolt with our own hand. So we need a remote handling tool. So that need uh, design and um, uh, developing such kind of tool is um, extremely huge work. So that is also another uh, area of interest. Then engineering and technology here. Engineering and technology, I have just put an image, but there are several branches of engineering based on your own uh, interest. You can opt for it and uh, go for the higher studies. Then comes the computation and data acquisition because when the experiment goes on, uh, you will get enormous amount of data and you cannot uh, compute it with a pen and paper. You have to do some you have to have some data acquisition and uh, computation system uh, to work upon. So that is also another field which can be explored based on the interest, of course. So uh, um, uh, we are uh, leading towards the end of the presentation. So uh, for the opportunity at ETER India, IPR, and at ETER France, so if we look at, uh, at IPR and ITER India, we have several students coming every year for summer training for their projects. Research proposals are being submitted, PhD and postdoc fellow comes every year. So uh, if you are interested in working in similar kind of subjects, you can apply and you can see the further details about the opportunity on our websites. And also at ITER, uh, you can see the related projects and opportunity on this website. So with that, I'll just end by quoting Marie Curie. I'm sure you all will be aware of her. She's the uh, first uh, lady who got, who got Nobel twice for chemistry and uh, physics. So what she says that you cannot hope to build a better world without improving the individual. And to that end, each of us must work for our own improvement.
and believe me our own improvement will pave the way for a better society lead uh, or establish a better society for tomorrow and uh, the generation to come so with that i thank you all for your kind attention Thank you very much for this nice talk. I'm very glad and uh, at the same time very thankful to you that you addressed uh, those issues um, for the women in science and also you showed us the percentages. Uh, all we are trying to do in this um, International Women's Day program uh, is to encourage the students, especially the girl students, so that uh, in future uh, we can we can make this ratio about one to one, at least closer to that. We we'll look forward to that. Uh, do you want to interact with uh, the students now? Uh, no, I guess I can explain. Actually, I want to uh, make them realize that how they uh, I mean, when I said about stereotype thinking, then I just wanted to make everyone realize that it is already there in our mind and how to extract it. That was the pur whole purpose of uh, having that interaction, but now I have already explained, so uh, it's okay. <laughs> okay, uh, then uh, we can take up some questions. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, There is one question, um, can plasma be an alternative to fossil fuels in the near future? Plasma, I can say plasma, but fusion, uh, fusion reactors uh, can be an alternative for fossil fuels. Uh, as I explained in that slide, because of the several limitation of fossil fuels, we are uh, moving towards the fusion reactors. Okay, uh, another question is, is ITR safe in case of earthquake or flood, thus natural calamities? Yeah, yeah. that's why it is called a safe uh, reactor because um, in this kind of reactor, uh, chain reaction which is expected in nuclear fission is not expected. So if you lower down the temperature of the machine, it will automatically stop the reaction. So in case of earthquake or flood or kind of uh, uh, phenomena like tsunami, which happened in past, and it uh, create a lot of uh, uh, problem in the nuclear reactors. So that part has already been taken care of while designing this kind of reactor. Yeah, and generally uh, when people uh, hear about those uh, nuclear fusion or something, the first thing they think of about the radiation because they get concerned about the radiation and people actually, uh, people actually are afraid of nuclear power and those power plants mm -hmm. and those things. People don't yeah, usually yeah. welcome it in a very uh, open-minded way. Um, I had one question in um, um, the slide 7 where you showed the technical details and the challenges as well. Uh, you mentioned about the length of the superconducting strand. So mm -hmm. uh, what I'm not understanding is uh, how are you maintaining such a big length? I mean, uh, if it's just two times the earth, then how okay. the total size this thing? <laughs> So what happens in superconductors, if you see, they are, these strands are wound uh, like a coil. In, uh, they are very tiny wires and they are wound around that uh, coil. Uh, so that is how, if you see the winding, it is very, very tight winding uh, of such kind of strands. So if you um, measure the length, if you open it entirely, and if you measure the length, it will be like that. But in wound form, you won't see that length. Okay, uh, I have one question from that slide also. That how do you achieve that lowest and highest temperature? 
especially the highest one highest one okay so there are several sub components for heating of the plasma so uh, out of which hncd uh, neutral beam injector i would say neutral beam injector electron cyclotron ion cyclotron these are some of the system which are designed for heating the plasma so uh, i'm not sure how much in detail we can go but uh, they provide about 50 megawatt of power to heat the plasma so if we see a neutral beam injector they inject the beam with very high current and uh, megavolt of uh, power and uh, they transfer their energy kinetic energy to the uh, ions which are there inside the vessel and that's how they heat they transfer their energy and they heat the plasma so uh, these are the different mechanism by which heating is provided in heater ec ic uh, mbi as i said and uh, there are also another phenomena which i am uh, i am frankly i am not aware about it it's a uh, pellet injection but i do not know the detail about it but it is there so by those means by transferring those heat to the central uh, part of the plasma which is existing in the vessel the heat is being transferred Okay, I'm taking questions from the audience. Um, uh, there is one question: uh, Is the basic working principle of this project kind of similar to the Large Hadron Collider? Uh, no, I won't say that because in Large Hadron Hadron Collider, uh, it is not working on the principle of fusion. Uh, this is purely fusion based. Okay. Um, few more question. Uh, you also mentioned about different scopes. Um, but there is a question that is there any scope in India for PG students and what one should focus being at the verge of research. what one should focus uh being at the verge of research uh i can already explain the different requirement of teacher and different uh, uh, disciplines uh, where you need to focus upon so based on your interest uh, after doing your pg uh, maybe you can go for research or you can do similar kind of work uh, to make yourself i mean some expertise uh you can acquire and after that you can apply for uh, uh for similar kind of projects you can visit the site uh, when some posts are coming or some uh projects are there you can apply there as well but it would be I, i mean i would advise that you acquire a minimum level of expertise in the area of your interest and then uh, apply for the post or for for the research we had uh, one question from our zoom participants very common one uh, is uh, is nuclear a harmful gas for us oh, nuclear i guess the question is uh, not properly phrased uh, nuclear uh, phenomena i would say nuclear having two phenomena fusion or fission also a decay but right now we are concentrating on fission and fusion so Yeah, when i am talking about nuclear uh, fusion uh, and uh, it is not uh, harmful uh, as it is considered uh, i mean uh, in our case and uh, and the way it is designed okay um 
you mentioned that uh, from India you are providing the cryogenics, uh, that's your responsibility. And what are the other responsibilities from India? Okay, so there are nine different packages as I mentioned in that slide. Uh, you want me to go to that slide or I can just brief you about it? So there are nine packages. Um, cryostat is the outer jacket, as I said. Then uh, diagnostic neutral beam injector. That is another one, which is for the detection of helium, uh, which is a byproduct of nuclear fusion. So that injector is being designed and will be shipped to ITER. Then uh, cryogenics and uh, cryoplant, uh, uh, that is for cooling, uh, cooling water is another uh, package in wall shield, which is uh, uh, used or designed for uh, uh, suppressing the neutrons, uh, which is placed inside the vacuum vessel. So that is another package in wall shield. So uh, electron and cyclotron heating, as I said, they are also two different packages. They are providing part of the heating component for uh, ITER. So, and of course, power supply. Power supply is another package who provides power supply for DNB, EC, and IC. So these are nine different packages who are contributing in different uh, aspects or in different requirement of it. I don't see any more questions. Okay. It was a very nice and very informative talk. I want to thank you again and all the participants as well for their showing their curiosity. And I'm very thankful for this lecture. It was a very, very beautiful lecture for all of us, not only for women, for, uh, for every Indian uh, who are aspiring for walking in the frontiers of science. Uh, Thank you very much. It was a pleasure to interact with the student and you as well. And I once again thank uh, Nehru Science Center for giving me this opportunity. Thank you very much.